Hey, Summit Daily viewers, sports and outdoors editor Antonio Olivero coming at you today from the Summit Daily News office. Shortly before 6 a.m., we're going to set out for a hike here from the bottom of Mount Royal, as you can see at left there. The sun is rising, like I said, just before 6 a.m., and we're going to try to get up to peak one today. Should be about a three point. I don't know, 3.5 to 4 mile gain, probably close to 4 miles, starting up Mount Royal there, as you can see uh, from our office here. Uh, parked the car here in the lot near Frisco Main Street, and uh, we're going to head up super steep up to Mount Royal, then up to Victoria, then hopefully up to Peak One. Um, yeah, so uh, about maybe 4 miles to get up there. Maybe a little less and pretty steep going up. I expect close to 4,000 feet, 3,500 to 400 feet of 4,000 feet of elevation gain. So um, should be a fun one, another steep one. So as we cross Frisco Main Street, it's worth noting that most people uh, park for this trail and these hikes down further toward Interstate 70 off uh, Frisco 201. We're going to access the trail here today via. The wreck path so a little bit of a stroll through mason town might see the neighborhood moose uh, we'll see um then we'll head up royal so you're gonna look at about a five minute walk maybe longer if you're at that if you're parking at that lot down by the interstate if we're gonna get to the mason town spur jaunts off to the right to access the back side of mount royal here as this is where our climb will pretty much begin it's gonna be steep pretty much the whole way on this Forest Service Trail. A little under 0.7 miles from Main Street and probably closer to a half mile from the Mason Town uh, Trailhead. You're gonna reach this junction with Chauncey's Trail and the Mount Royal Trail. You're gonna to wanna to continue up right to continue climbing Mount Royal. So we're about 500 feet of elevation gain and just under a mile of distance from Frisco Main Street. Just showing you this pitch here and also the nature of the trail heading up Royal, a very popular trail. So you could see, number one, how steep it is, and number two, how careful you'll have to be with your footing, namely on the way down. Hiking at a pretty good pace. It took us about 45 minutes to get to the junction of the Mount Royal and Victoria Peak One Trail, about 1,200 feet up from Frisco Main Street. So Frisco Main Street's just over 9,000 feet. You can see the Mount Royal Trail at right. We won't be taking that trail. We'll be going left here, continuing on to Victoria and Peak One. If Frisco's a little over 9,000 feet, we are about 10, 2, 10, 3 right now, maybe a little higher as we reach what I'd regard as the second third of this hike that, especially if you're gonna be challenged by it in terms of fitness, you should look at in thirds. The first third is that 1,200 feet up from Main Street, steep along the Royal Trail. Now, the grade is going to continue pretty similarly as we continue up and over Victoria, the top of which there's that kind of radio weather station. Then the final third, the home stretch, is continuing above tree line up to peak one. We have gained 2,200 feet over 2.3 miles as up ahead through these windswept trees, you can see our destination, the summit of peak one ahead. So more than halfway there in terms of both distance and elevation gain as these trees have been ravaged by 10 mile canyon winds up here near tree line. You can see the tower at the top of Mount Victoria straight ahead. We're gonna crest that, a little bit more climbing to go here on Victoria before we head on up above tree line through the rock, the talus to the Peak One Summit. Be warned, the Victoria climb, although it relents a little bit after you head off from the Royal Trail, it gets steep. And it's a, a steeper climb than in, in most portions than the Royal climb. Though I will say the footing is better on the climb up Victoria. As we pass the uh, tower here at the top of Mount Victoria, I've stashed my trekking poles behind this rock as we continue up toward peak one. We've climbed about 2,500 feet thus far, so have 
over a thousand feet of gain left. It's been about 2.6 miles, so pretty steep the whole way. We are now at about 11,600 feet as we crest the tippity top tree line here between Victoria and Peak One. So from the top of Victoria, which you can see the building in the distance, I stayed to hiker's right of this little rock tower ridge up here. Came through this screen talus, wasn't too loose. Then found this little bit of a weathered dirt path here. You see Interstate 70 down below, 10 Mile Canyon. Seems like we're on the best path there is. As we see Quandry and Baldy come up, sunrise illuminating them. We continue up toward Peak One. As I continue up again through this portion back here, I skirted this rock tower up here by hiking along this trail, which is along the right. Beautiful Columbine wildflower, state flower sprouting up between the rocks here, um, near 12,000 feet. So I'm gonna continue as I skirted that rock tower on the trail, which is clearly defined as you can see up toward the 10 mile range ridge line just continue on it after we like i said two straight rock towers kind of skirted toward the right all right about 12,100 feet and 3,000 feet of elevation gain into our hike we've gained this first fall summit as you can see the trail down below that we've hiked up in gained this first fall summit we got a couple more ahead of us to get to the summit of peak one as you can see ahead all right, so as we're at about 12,500 feet, a little bit over that, making the final push uh, over the final two, three, maybe 400 feet toward the summit up ahead. It may look as you hike along the ridge and you look ahead like you're gonna be coming along a nice edge, knife's edge ridge with a lot of consequence. For what it's worth, like if you look down here, there, there is a trail that's pretty well carved into the uh, rocky ridge line so that you can use to skirt the very top of these rock towers as you come across the ridge. So uh, take solace in that, although the views downward are pretty amazing. Looking that way toward 10 Mile Canyon into Interstate 70, and then looking this way down below, if you can make it out, you see that kind of big wide slide with some vegetation growing into those trees. That's the slide that re-slid for the first time in about 100 years, a little over 100 years last winter uh, with that March avalanche cycle. All right, after a little bit more technical of climbing and scrambling, although the trail uh, skirting the rock towers is pretty well defined, so we approach the Peak One Summit here around 12,800 feet. Lingering snow fields, always awesome to see here in mid-July in the Rocky Mountains. Pretty big one hanging on up here near the summit. As you can see the ridge line, we've climbed several fall summits back there looking toward Interstate 70 and Mount Victoria. It's taking us about two hours and 45 minutes at a good pace to get up here to the summit of Peak One. You don't have to hike through any of that snow Spurt, skirt it pretty good but yeah what a fun hike some fun rock climbing oh there's a marmot <laughs> you may have missed them you may peek around but uh yeah i've been hearing them as i scaled up here toward the summit as we approach the true summit here you can see the ridge line going toward peak two also known as the as 10 mile peak, a bit higher than peak one here as we find ourselves at the summit cairn, as you can see, just about 12,800 feet. So what a hike, an awesome one. And one last check in as we stand here at the summit cairn to peak one, looking out into the craggy gore range 
According to my topo app, 3,681 feet of elevation gain over, I believe, about 3.76 miles. Um, so, you know, that gives you an idea of how steep the climbing is going to be. It took us a little under two hours and 50 minutes. As you can see, the lone patch of snow there, Central Park, the summer set up for Woodward Copper at Copper Mountain Resort. You can see all those ski runs looking out west toward Vail and Eagle County in this direction. Peak one, the 10 mile range continues over toward Breckenridge Ski Resort, which you can see some of those ski runs at left as we pan back around. Just want to give you one last 360 degree view of the summit here. Breckenridge down below the town of Breckenridge and then panning back left the Lake Dillon area with the town of Frisco and then ultimately in the distance, the town of Dillon and then toward the right going toward Keystone, Grays and Tories at right. And then the interstate heading up toward the Continental Divide, straight ahead, then panning back over across I-70, the Blue River Valley and Silverthorne, headed up toward Heaney, Williams Fork Range at right, and the Gore Range up ahead.